In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a simple card positioning system for your racing card game inside of Unity. So you can keep track of the positions of each of the car inside of the game, something like this here. I know from personal experience that this is something that a lot of beginners struggle with when they try to create a racing game. So I hope that this tutorial will help you out. Before we get started, I just want to apologize for being uh, inactive on YouTube lately and it's because I have been struggling with some financial issues so I had to take a break from YouTube but now that I am back I promise to be more active and create more fun content for you guys and you can also help me by subscribing to my YouTube channel that will help me stay motivated and you can also financially help me using patreon or you can just donate me through PayPal. Alright, so with that being said, let's get started. Alright, so I have created a simple Unity scene here with this track that I have downloaded over from Kenny's site. I will put a link to it in the description. I have also downloaded this card from SS Store from uh, Arcade Car Pack. I will also put a link to this in the description as well so you can grab it for free and besides that I have created this massive terrain for the ground and a canvas that holds the uh, text for the position that we will use later on but that's pretty much all I have done here and I've also kept pretty much all of the settings on the player car as the uh, as the one that comes with the standard one to make it easier for you guys to follow along and now if we play this we can actually drive around our car as we are working on our racing car game we need to have someone to rest that's right so we need to create a bunch of ai cars for this but before we actually do that i just want to show you how this all is going to work so let's suppose that this is our track and we have two cars, so the player car and the AI car. So now the first thing we will do is create a bunch of checkpoint positions. So these are all the checkpoints position with the black mark. We will put them across all of the track. And for each of the car, we will also create a physical checkpoint. So two checkpoints for each of the cars. And they will be placed at the first checkpoint at the start. And now as one of the car collects the checkpoints, so like this, this car has crossed the checkpoint 1. Now the physical checkpoint that belongs to the particular car will move on to the next checkpoint position. And as it crosses the other checkpoints, check physical checkpoint will keep on moving. And the same would happen for the other car here. Physical checkpoint will move on to the ne uh, next checkpoint position on the list. So that's how the uh, checkpoint system is going to work. And as for the positioning system, what we will do is we will assign both of these cars a unique identifier, so 0 and 1. And to determine which position the car currently holds, we will compare the uh, number of checkpoints that the car has collected. So the one with more checkpoints will be placed first. And in case the car in the back overtakes the car in the front, it will have more checkpoints. So we will change the position. So we will change its position to 1 or wherever it belongs all right so so now we can introduce the ai cars i have also already created a prefab here you can of course use the ai card that comes with the standard asset pack which is pretty much what i am using only the only i have changed the body of the car so let's drag and drop this inside of the scene here it appears and it looks pretty cool all right so now that we have the ai car it won't do anything right so the first thing we need to do is create some sort of track and if we go to the waypoint, waypoint progress tracker here it takes in a circuit component so we will create a track for the card for the right so that it always has a target all right so the way we are going to do this is we will place a bunch of random game objects along the track so to create a circuit for our ai card to follow Alright, so create an empty game object here. We'll call this circuit. You can call it whatever you want. We set the position. And for the points on the map, I'm going to use a 3D cube. 
so 3d cube here I'll call this point you can of course call it whatever you want let's place the first one just right ahead of our AI car you can of course be as accurate as you want I'll just place it here and we actually don't need the box slider so go and remove this and we also don't need the mesh render but I'm gonna keep it for visualization purpose and let's also bring this up a bit so we can see it clearly and now that we have created our first point so I'm just gonna duplicate this and put it all across the track and of course you can be as accurate as you want but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it like this all right then the final one here and yep they are pretty much covering all of the track so our circuit is kind of ready but we also need to turn this into a path and the way we are going to do this is if we just go to our AI card here and open up the waypoint progress figure we cannot drag and drop this inside this because it, it's not a circuit yet in order to convert this into a path for the AI car we need to give it a waypoint circuit script here it is now all we need to do is just press this assign using all children button and it might throw a bunch of errors at first but don't worry about it when you play the game they will disappear but if the list is not appearing for some reason, you might want to click on this little icon, go to the debug mode. And here you need to make sure that the circuit is already here. And if it's not, you can just drag and drop this inside of this. And let's go back to the normal mode. And sometimes you might get kind of weird arrangement here. In that case, you will see these lines not uh, forming properly. And in order to solve it, you will have to go to the circuit and you will have to place them place each of the points in the correct order here and rename it accordingly so waypoint 001 002 and stuff like that and once you have done it you can just go ahead and hit assign using our child components and yeah let's go to the air car and we can just drag and drop inside the circuit here and also make sure that the air car also has a waypoint target here you can find it inside of the helpers Waypoint target, you can drag and drop this in, and it's pretty much all we need to set up the AI car. So let's try to play this and see if it works. And indeed, it does. Our AI car is actually driving, so we have a self driving car, and, and it doesn't feel like a race, it's more like a friendly ride on the track. But that's not the point, right? We have the AI car working, so, so we can carry on with creating the checkpoints all right so now that the AI car is working we will create the checkpoints in the same way that we created this little circuit for our AI car by placing a bunch of game objects on the track firstly we will create an empty game object here I'll just call it checkpoints reset the position and for the for the checkpoint positions i will use the sam cube all right just call it cp1 and the first checkpoint will be right ahead the car and for this one we will need to we will need the box collider but just enable the es trigger here and we also need to scale this up so it covers pretty much the old break so our so our car is able to hit it let's place it somewhere around here uh, you can of course set this up according to your track i'll just place a bunch of these checkpoints along the track all right so the closer these checkpoints are the more accurate the positioning system will be so i'll just put a bunch of these checkpoints somewhere around here and the last one and it is kind of blocked our camera vision but we will just get rid of these in a minute right and and that looks good we have placed a bunch of checkpoints along the track 
And yeah, I think it looks good. We are ready with the checkpoints. And there are a couple of ways in which we can create the checkpoint system. So the first one is, so when a car hits the checkpoint, we will disable that checkpoint and we will enable the checkpoint that is in front of it. And so the next one and the next one and so on. So that's the first case. We can either do this or the one that I'm going to show you in this video is we will basically remove all these checkpoints. We will, so we will only need the transform clip component of these checkpoints and nothing else. So we can just go ahead and remove the box glider here. So let's remove this. Before we do that, let's just make a copy of this. All right, so that we ha actually have a physical checkpoint. And the rest of these checkpoints will just be the position orders. So let's select all of the checkpoints and we will get rid of the box glider as well as the mesh render. So now we only have the transform component of all these checkpoints. So the way this is going to work is when a player car collects a checkpoint. So this one, it will move on to the next checkpoint position. So our CP will start from the CP1 position and when a car collects it, it will move on to the next one and so on. But the thing is, we will have to make a multiple of these checkpoints for each of the cars so that each of the car has its own checkpoint and it doesn't collect the one that belongs to the other. And for this to work, we will have to, we will have to create multiple layers for all these cars and these checkpoints here. So that player car doesn't collect the checkpoint that belongs to the AI car and the AI car doesn't collect the checkpoints that belong to the player car. I know it sounds a little complicated, but trust me, it's as simple as it gets. All right, so for the player car, we will just assign it a different layer. So I have created a bunch of layers here. So car one, car two, car three, and so on. For the player car, we, I will assign it the car one. And the AI car, which will be the second car, I will assign it the layer car two. There we go, here's children as well. And of course, you can just go ahead and create as many layers for as many cars as you want to put. All right, so now that we have assigned the individual layers for both of these cars, we can just remove the checkpoint. First, we need to create a prefab out of it and delete this from the scenes. And we will just instantiate it through a script for as many cars as we have. So now we need to get to the scripting part. All right, so let's create a rest manager. We'll create a new script. Call this one rest manager. All right, so let's open this up and we will start scripting. All right, so inside of this script, we will have to create a bunch of reference. So the first one will be the physical checkpoint game object. We'll call the CP. You can call it whatever you want. And another public game object. And we'll use this for keeping reference for our checkpoint holder. So the checkpoint holder here. And we will we'll create another public public game object. And that will be an array for all the cards. And another public transform array for all of the checkpoints position. All right, I'll call them checkpoints position. And we need we also need to create an game object array for all the individual checkpoints or the physical checkpoints for each of our car, right? Okay, and and another private integer that will hold the number of cars and a private integer that will hold the number of checkpoints. So total CP or total checkpoints, whatever you want to call it. And now inside of our start method, what we're going to do is we will set the total cars is equal to cars dot length. So however many cars we have. And the next thing we want to do is we will get the number of total checkpoints. And we'll uh, get the child count of the checkpoint holder here. 
So check my order transform dot child count. All right. So now we have both the number of total cars and the number of total checkpoints. And all we need to do is set these checkpoints, right? So we will create a new method here. We'll call it set checkpoints. All right. So inside of the check set checkpoints, we will get all of the checkpoints position from the checkpoint holder game object. But we first need to initialize the array. So we will initialize with the number of total checkpoints that we have. All right. So now that we have created the array and given it its length, we will fill this up. So using a for loop, which will go from zero to the total number of checkpoints. And we will fill in the array, so the checkpoints position, and we will set it. We will set it equal to the all of the checkpoints that we have inside of our checkpoint holder game object. All right. So this will give us all the checkpoints position inside of the checkpoint holder that we have created. So let's just call the set checkpoint method up here. Now let's save this and try this out. Let's go back to Unity. Let's assign the checkpoint here. So CP. As for the checkpoint holder, let's drag and drop our checkpoint game object. As for the cars, we have two, so we'll set it to two and assign each of the cars. So the player car and the AI car. We don't have to do anything else. They'll get assigned automatically. All right, so let's see if it works. And indeed, we have all of the checkpoints set correctly, as you can see here. So this has gotten all of the child game objects and assigned it to our checkpoint position array. All right, so now that we have all the checkpoints, so we will create checkpoints for each of the cars. So let's go back to the script. So checkpoints for each of the car and so we will initialize this with the length of the total cars. So we will create a checkpoint for each of the car. It will go through, it will go from zero to the total number of cars, which is two in our case. So we will just instantiate a new checkpoint. Instantiate CP. And the position will be the first checkpoint. So, and we'll get its position. So, transform dot position, and also the and also the rotation. Awesome. So, it will just instantiate checkpoints for each of the car and place it at the first checkpoint position. And we can also change the name of the checkpoints, so we can see which checkpoint belongs to which car. We can try this out now. So the list is empty, and as soon as we hit play, it will create a check a couple checkpoints. Here it is: CP0 and CP1. You can also check them here inside of the hierarchy. But the problem is that they are both at the same layer, right? We want these to have a different layer that their car belongs to, and we will do that via the script. So we will change the layer on each of the checkpoints. So we'll set the layer and here you can see the index number of the layer. It starts from six in my case. So I will set this equal to six plus the index number. So six and then seven and then eight. You can, you can of course set it to whatever the layer number your car has. And all right, so now that we have done it, let's see if it works. So CP zero has layer car one and cp1 should have the car layer two yep so now both of these checkpoints are on different layer and and to make sure that these layers don't collide with each other we will need to go to the project settings and inside of physics scroll down to the collision matrix here so we don't want these car layers to collide with each other so they only collide with the layer that they are on so car 5 will hit car 5 and car 4 and so on so yeah make sure you do that as well 
or alternatively if you want your cars to collide with each other you can go with a different approach like setting up the tags for these uh, individual checkpoints and stuff like that all right the next thing we need to do is we want to make sure that when a certain car hits the checkpoint the checkpoint moves forward right so we will create another script for each of the car so car cp manager and inside of the car cp manager here we can just get rid of both these methods we don't need them so firstly we need to create a void on trigger method and also we need to create a public integer that will hold the the number of cp that the car has crossed starting from zero all right and so now we need to see if the car has actually hit a checkpoint so we'll use this by comparing the tag we'll use cp for the checkpoint and if the car has actually hit the checkpoint so we'll increase the number of checkpoints the car has crossed so cp plus equals one so yeah that's basically all we need to do here and now inside of the rest manager all we need to do is we will create a new public method which will be called when a car actually collects a checkpoint so we'll call it car collected cp something like that so whenever a car collects a checkpoint it will call this method on the press manager and the rest manager will, will then send the checkpoint of the particular car to the next segment position right and in order to do that we will give each of the car an index value for a unique identifier so this will be a unique identifier for each of the car now go to the rest manager and here we need to get the car number or the car that has called this method and also another integer for the number of checkpoints that the car has this car has collected so the next thing we need to do is we will get the checkpoint that belongs to this particular car using its car number and we will set its position to the next checkpoint position so checkpoint positions and the cp number all right and transform the position and we also need to make sure that the rotation is correct so we'll just change the rotation as well all right so now we will just call this method using our car cp manager and we need to have some sort of reference for the rest manager here so the rest manager and now when the car collects the checkpoint so we'll just call the car collected cp method on the rest manager all right and here we need to pass in the car number as well as the cp number all right and now we can just save this and try this out and we need to give our ai car the same car cp manager script and we'll change the number of this car to one we'll assign the rest manager here and we'll do the same thing for the player car all right so now both of our cars has different numbers and we also need to set the tag for our checkpoint here so i'll just set it to cp now we can just go ahead and try this out so the moment of truth here we go and indeed the checkpoint moves forward so the car has collected checkpoint number one it moves to set and as it collects the second one it jumps back to the next one and now if we go to the ai car we should see that it has collected two checkpoints here and it should also work for the player car as well so let's try to collect one and second one so now we have player car has collected two checkpoints and here we go we can see that it has collected two checkpoints all right so now that the checkpoint system is working we can now use this to uh, determine the position of our cars here right 
So the card with the most checkpoints will be placed first and the card with the less checkpoints will be put behind it. Simple, right? So let's get back to our CP car manager here. And here we need to create another public integer that will keep track of the car position. All right, and, and now we will set these car positions at the start, at the start of our rest manager script. So we will create so we will just create a new method here. I'll call this set positions, set car positions. And here we will, and here what we will do, we will go through each of the car. So from zero to the total number of cars. And we will set their positions at the start of the game. And we will set the car position based on its index so i plus one so the car at zero index will be uh, at first position and so on and we will also do the same for the car number as well so we don't have to assign it every time we create a car all right we'll just call this method in the start method here okay all right, so now the checkpoints are set and so are the positions. And now we will use our checkpoint count to determine the position of each of the cards. And we will do that here when a car collects a checkpoint. Here we will just uh, create and call a new method. I'll just call it compare positions because it will basically compare the position of the car in the front and the car in the back. And let's just create this method. And we will also need the uh, car number here. So the car that has collected the checkpoint and is calling this method. So what we are going to do is, so whenever a car collects a checkpoint, it will trigger this compare positions. So it will check if the car is not currently at the first position already because then there will be no car in the front to compare the positions with. All right, so if, if the car position is greater than one, meaning that our car is not already in the first position, all right. And in that case, what we need to do is we will create some reference for the uh, current car. Uh, so the car that has just collected a checkpoint recently and we will get the uh, current car position so the position of the current car and we will set this equal to current car dot C, um, then cp manager and we will get the car position and we will also get the cars uh, cp count so the current car cp and we will set this equal to the CP if the car has crossed. So now we need to do the same thing for the car in the front as well. So we can compare both of these. And because we don't know which car it will be, so I'll just put a null here for now. Let's just initialize the car in front position to zero for now. And so will be the, the number of CP it has collected. And now we need to find which car is in the front. So we'll go through each of these cars and we'll check here which car is in the front by comparing its position to the position of this car. So whichever car is in front of it will be will have a minus one value, right? Like the car that has recently collected checkpoint is at the third position. So the car in the front will be at the second position. So three minus one. And once we find that car that is in front of it so we'll just fill in all the variables that we created up there so car in front is equal to this car and we'll get its cp count and we'll also get its position so now that we have both its position and also the and the checkpoint that it is collected we'll just call and break and the next thing is we will have to compare the uh, CP count of the current car, which is calling this method and the car in front of it. And if, 
and if the current car has collected more checkpoints than the car in the front then we will swap their positions so so the car that has collected more checkpoints than the car in the front we will just set its position to whatever position it is at minus one and we will do the same thing for the car in the front but we will just add one to its current position so if it is position one it will be at position two and the car that was at position two will be at position one all right so yeah that's all we need to do we can of course do our debug.log statement here to see if everything is working so the car with this car number has overtaken the car that was in the front of it all right i know it seems a little daunting but trust me it gets easier so let me just give you a quick little overview so what's happening here is whenever so whenever a car collects a checkpoint we are essentially calling this car collected method and so what it does is and so the first thing it checks if it is not at the first position already so that we have other cars in front of it to compare with so then we get the current car's position and its checkpoint count and we also get the same position and the checkpoints from the car in front we get its cp count and we also get its position and once we get it we compare the cp count of this car that has to the car that was in the front of it and if it's greater than the car in front we will basically just uh, swap both of these positions all right so let's see if it works so let's go ahead and play this and so the player car is at the first position with the car number zero of course and the ai car should have the car position two with the car number one what should happen is when the ai car collects a checkpoint its position should change to one all right and it has collected the checkpoint and as you can see here the car position has changed to one indeed because it has collected more checkpoint than the player car and now if we try to overtake the ai car i should have removed the mesh render on this i'll just do it in a minute for now let's try to go blindly and cross the ai car here we go and now and now we should be at the first position and indeed we are and the ai car sh should be at second position and indeed it is so yeah let's see if the ai car can overtake us again and here it goes it has collected the checkpoint and it is now at car position one and we are at car position two awesome so yeah the car position system is indeed working so now we will go ahead and enable the canvas and we will have the position updated so let's go back to the UPS manager and here we'll create a text game object let's first include the unity ui use public text and i'll just call it position text position txt you can call it whatever you want and now after we set the position of each of the cards we will set the position text dot text to whatever the car position that our car currently holds which will be car zero dot get component and we will get its position which will of course be one at the start out of the total cars right and we also need to update this every time a car makes an overtake let's just paste it here let's save this and head back inside of unity to test this out we let's assign the text here drag and drop this inside of this and and also let's just get rid of this mesh render so that we don't go in the rest blindly all right and here we go let the ai car overtake us we are at position one and as soon as it overtakes our car our car will be at position two and let's try to overtake the ai car oh my God. and we are at the first position 
so yeah indeed the position system is working and of course the more accurate system you want the more checkpoints you will have to put on these trick but i'm pretty happy with how this system is working for us but there is one problem just let the ai car take the whole lap and as soon as it collects the last checkpoint it will throw a bunch of error because then there will be no other checkpoint left right and it says that index out of range because we have run out of all the checkpoints reality what should happen is we should be able to keep on going even after all the checkpoints are collected right and at the last checkpoint we should just increase the lap count and lastly i just want to show you that this and this system should work on as many cars as you want so let's just duplicate this and place this car somewhere around here and what we need to do is first we need to tell the rest manager that we have added another car and also drag and drop our our second ai car and we will also need to change the layer we can of course do it dy dynamically through the script which we will in the next video and that's all we need to do now we can test this out with three cars here we go and i'm at position one let them take over and yep third position now and let me try to take them over okay well i'm not so good at it let's try again and here we go taking over one and then two we are at the first position and now it's time to let the ai cars take over there we go second and third both of these cars has overtaken us and of course we run into problems when we finish the lap so that's pretty much it for this video so i hope this gives you some ideas of how you can create your own checkpoint system if you want to and in the next one we will also create the checkpoint and lap system i can do a complete series so just let me know in the comment section thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one